Hi, my name is Kyle Sandler and I'm the Education Coordinator for Enfield Schaefer Museum and I'm going to be showing you how to make whisk brooms today. And so what we first want to do is we're going to open our bag up and we're going to pull out our supplies. You're going to have a bundle of broom corn. On that bundle of broom corn is going to be a little plastic needle that we're going to use to tie our broom off at the end. Um, you're also going to have some other stuff in there. You're going to have red twine for winding and you're going to have some pieces of wax to help with keep to help the twine adhere to the broom. Um, so I'm going to have my trusty assistant here come around and get a close-up so I can show you guys how to wind your first whisk broom. Now we're ready to start making our whisk broom. So the first step once we have all of our uh, all of the parts of our kit out is we want to take this little craft stick with the red twine wrapped around it and we're going to take this piece of tape off of it so we can loosen up this twine. The next step we want to do is we can unravel our twine a little bit what I usually like to do is I like to put the craft stick under a hard, under a heavy object. I'm going to use this roll of tape, but I would definitely recommend at home you use something heavy like a book. The next step is we're going to tie a, just a simple overhand knot um, around the end of the loop. So you just make a loop just like that, and then you're just going to stick the end right through it, and then pull it nice and tight. It should be enough, just like that. The next step of broom making is we're going to take our piece of wax and what we want to do is we want to wax the string here. And this is where you can see that my tape isn't quite doing it for me so it's nice to have a big heavy book. But what you're going to do is take your piece of wax and you're just going to run it along the string here. If this is moving around a lot like it is for me and it's, and it's bothering you, you can also try to hold on to it. And so once your string is nice and waxed, you can start winding the broom. Now the hardest part of broom making is actually this step I'm going to show you right now. You're going to take your bundle of broom corn. You're going to notice that one end is kind of stocky like this. That's called the butt. The other end is called the brush. It's this nice feathery material here that's actually going to be the main part of your broom. It's good to give it a nice tap on the table. And then what you want to do next is you want to make your initial knot. This is a special type of knot called a clove hitch. It's a little tricky um, and you'll have included written instructions that may help explain this a little bit better. But if you watch me closely, what you want to do is you're going to wrap it around like this one time. And then when you come over the next time, you can, you can wind. And I'm going to wind it to the right because I wanted you guys to get a better look. But you're going to wind to the left. And then you're going to wind it around one more time to the right. And then what you do is you're just going to stick the string here through the middle and then you're going to pull it nice and tight. Now there's different types of knots you can use. So if you know other knots that you think will work better or if your parents or guardian have a knot that will work better, try that too. Um, but this is a good starting point here. So I'm going to let you see this up close. So that's a clove hitch. So you're going to pull it nice and tight. And then the next step what we want to do in the broom making process is we're going to take this end of the string with the knot and we're just going to tuck it in here nice and tight. Now one thing you can do at home carefully is you can use a little piece of glue on the end here and you can actually glue this knot into the end of the broom. But that's going to be your starting point for your first broom here. The next step is going to be you're going to start to wind the string around. Now before you start to wind it's never, it's never a bad idea to put more wax on the string. The wax is going to allow the string to stick to the broom corn a little bit better until you do the final step, which is going to be tying it off. And so now I'm going to, I'm going to wrap the string around here a couple more times so we get a nice little base going in here. Usually do about five times around. Okay, and you can see I have a little bit of extra string here. So the next step is we're going to be tying off the broom. So you're going to take your little plastic needle. You want to be careful. This end's pretty dull, but, but just be careful with it anyways. And you're going to lay it right on top like that. Okay? Let me see that up close. And now what you're going to do is you're going to wrap the rest of your cord, or most of the rest of your cord, around the plastic needle. And then when you have just a little bit left over, like two or three inches, just like this, you're going to push this through the loop here, the eye of the needle, and should go right through if you're lucky. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull this through like this. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull that string underneath your cord here, your twine, and that's going to actually tie off your broom. And so you can clean it up now. You're going to pull it nice and tight. Okay. 
just like that. And then what you can do is you can trim this end down a little bit with a pair of scissors. And then what I generally like to do with brooms like this, because they do loosen up over time, so you can give it a nice, good, another good tug here. And then if you want to glue this end down to the bundle, that sometimes helps to hold the broom into its final shape. Same here. If this one pops out just like it did on mine, you're going to stick it right back in and apply just a tiny dab of glue there as well. And then once the glue's been applied, we're going to let the broom dry for a little bit. Um, once the broom is dry, if you have an end like this that's uneven, you can use a pair of scissors to just carefully trim it down. Shake, shaker brooms were not always perfectly neat. And then this other end you can see is a little long. Now this can be a little tricky. You can leave it nice and long if you like. Um, it gives you a nice handle on this side if you, but if you want, you can trim it down. So you're going to want to use a nice pair of sharp scissors and maybe a good idea to have your parent do it. And basically you just turn it and slowly work the scissors around and it'll trim this broom down eventually. But like I said, if you're having a hard time with it, don't worry about it, and you can leave a nice wide handle just like this. And so you have successfully made your first whisk broom. As always, if you guys have any questions or any trouble with this activity, please feel free to contact the museum directly. You can send me an email at education at shakermuseum.org.